I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. We must get onto the wall. The battle will end in April when Westmoreland sends relief from the coast and it breaks through Operation Pegasus. But before that, Bravo Company loses most of a platoon. They're slaughtered. They can't get the bodies back. They sit out there for mo- uh, for the month of March. And Ken Pipes, the ca- the commander of Bravo Company, it feels like he's going mad. What does he say about it now, Greg? Well, Ken Pipes, who, who was a wonderful human being, he was a terrific company commander, much loved by his men at the time uh, and, and respected by them and uh, unto this day. And uh, Ken, it was a very painful thing because he actually could see the bodies of some of his, uh, of his men who were killed in that February 25th ambush, and, and he would uh, look through his binoculars and could see the bodies out there, but he was prohibited from going outside the wire to get them in. Uh, they, they were uh, several hundred meters away, uh, and the North Vietnamese were out there in force. And so finally, uh, as the, the uh, push-up from the coast, the relief column was being prepared, that Ken Pipes and Bravo Company uh, were given permission to lead uh, a strike outside the wire, the eastern uh, end of the combat March base. March 30th, yes. March 30th, and it, it became known as the, the Payback Patrol, uh, but it was uh, really the first strike from uh, from inside the base. And Ken and his company, uh, Ken was severely wounded uh, during this assault. Uh, Corporal Steve Weesey, who actually could have left uh, but uh, he had finished his tour, but refused to leave when he knew his, his brothers were going out to try to retrieve the bodies of their comrades, and they were going into combat. And so Steve also uh, led his squad into the fight. And some extraordinary events that happened that day, and, and uh, uh, I believe uh, eight or nine uh, Bravo uh, Marines were killed uh, in the fighting that day, but they uh, completely routed the North Vietnamese forces uh, that were dug in uh, in, in an extraordinary World War II uh, style assault with uh, flamethrowers and uh, bayonet charges. Uh, really a remarkable, remarkable fight. All these years later, Greg's book is assembled from testimony, memories of the men who were there and the, uh, the Marine records as well. And he takes us, as the book closes, to the Vietnam Memorial and tells us the panels, 55 of 140 panels, of the Vietnam Memorial, these are Greg's notes, I'm from Greg's book, have names of men who died at Khe San. And especially important is this to the men who now have started to gather. There's a Khe San uh, uh, reunion. How often does it meet, Ken? Greg? Uh, they, they meet annually, uh, John. The, the Khe San Veterans Association has been meeting since the 1980s. Uh, it has grown in numbers. Uh, it is a, an important uh, bonding experience for these men who really had the most uh, intense experience of their lives at Khe Sanh in 1968. And every uh, they try to meet every four years or so in Washington, D.C., uh, so they can go to the wall, so they can go down to, uh, to Quantico and, and now the Marine Corps Museum there. Uh, and it's a, it, it's a very powerful experience. And I went with one of the Marines that I write about, Dennis Mannion, uh, to the wall uh, early one morning, I believe it was the morning of September 1st, uh, uh, 2011. Uh, and it was um, uh, an, an amazing experience. And by that point, I had interviewed about 90 Quezon survivors. I knew the stories of, of so many young men who had died there. And to go down the wall and to see day after day after day the names of these extraordinary young men uh, who had fallen at Quezon. It, it, it was an incredibly powerful experience for me, so you can imagine what it's like for the men who were with these brothers when they were killed. Let's mention Mannion. He was forward observer. I believe he was on 8, 881. Is that where he was? Uh, 861. 861. He, was Kilo, yes. he was assigned to Kilo 326. And Correct. his memories and inform your book. He can remember seeing the ridge line about 500 yards away filled with north vietnamese who were firing on him and then during the night the b-52s would come in and the spookies the big gunships would come in and he described it as apocalypse can he does he still talk about it that way 
Yes, no, he, it, it, Dennis has a uh, remarkable recall, a uh, uh, great um, memory. He became an English literature teacher and football coach after the war. He uh, uh, was raised a wonderful family. His uh, uh, youngest son, John, I'm happy to tell you, just graduated from the basic school at Quantico as a, a Marine Corps second lieutenant. Uh, so... Uh, uh, really, an extraordinary story. And but but Dennis was uh, putting fire uh, onto the North Vietnamese that that uh, had occupied a ridgeline about 500 meters uh, uh, to the west of Hill 861. And it was a cat and mouse game with the NVA spotters and and uh, this constant uh, uh, effort to find targets and to put American fire on the uh, North Vietnamese wherever they were. And so Dennis was very much a part of that effort. The book is Last Stand at Quezon. There's an enormous amount of detail. I recommend very carefully uh, the, to follow the combat. Uh, Greg has done the job of finding out where people came from, where they were born, how they grew up, what they graduated from. Many of the men who didn't, young men, very young men who didn't come back, are remembered here by those who did. Also, the places on the memorial wall, you can find the names in Greg's books, are very carefully outlined, so you can find them when you go to Washington. Last ended case on Greg Jones is the author. I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show. I'm John Batchelor, and you know my longtime colleague, Bob Zimmerman, keeps the website behind the black. Your kind support is most welcome. Two dollars or five dollars for a monthly subscription or a twenty-five dollar donation. This is Bob Zimmerman, and I want to thank your listeners for their remarkable long-term generosity to Behind the Black. It's really appreciated. Most welcome, Bob. I'm John Batchelor.